I've got a retinette here and this one probably looks a bit familiar it's a bit unusual this one this one's known as the type 022 slash 7 I think it's a bit odd what's odd about it well your type 022 retinette normally looks like this and the distinguishing difference here well the main one here is this front here this front section is a casting that's die casting and on this one it's a pressing chrome plated that's a bit unusual where's this come from well here we have the type 030 this was the follow-up retina to the type 022 that we're more commonly seeing around the place and you know it was updated obviously we had a bright line finder there wasn't an awful lot of other changes here but one distinctive change was this front panel and now we have this chrome plated pressing looks nice and neat and the chrome plated pressing of course was much more durable in terms of finish than this die casting here which was only a painted finish and typically turned to custard you see some fairly nice examples this one's especially ugly when I get round to servicing this one I'll refinish that one and it'll look just like new again but back to the story in hand how did we get this thing this sort of mongrel a piece of one and a piece of the other well the secret is that it was made for the British market and it was made to keep the cost down so that it came under a particular price point and probably didn't trigger as so uh, as much import duties or whatever at the time since the UK like lots of the Commonwealth had some pretty steep import duties on fancy goods like cameras and stuff at the times these cameras were made so this one I can't remember exactly what the story is now I think from memory that basically it's one of these with the top cover for one of these I think that's I think that's the secret I think basically it was the later camera with the old style viewfinder to keep the cost down but I'm going to have this apart to service it and I've got these other two here sitting in front of me of course so I'll be able to open them up and compare things as and when I need to to see which is correct whether it's the new camera with an old style top or the old camera with a new style front I can hardly remember now I, I know I learnt all this stuff some time ago because other people have been in and uh, done all the research not me I'm just here to fix the things but this is it it's an interesting camera just for the UK market and consequently there's not millions of them around I'm going to open these cameras up I'm going to remove the top covers to start off with and see what the differences look like there so I don't know what numbers I told you before this one here 030 this one here 022 this one here 030 slash 9 is apparently the designation when I looked it up I probably told you something different a minute ago anyway I'll remove these top covers and we'll compare the three cameras well of the three cameras I have here this was the 022 this was the 030 slash 9 and this was the 030 and you can see quite clearly that these two match and it certainly looks quite different to this one this one is drilled here these two are not and they're painted black this one is not so there's certainly a difference there so looking at this from the top I would say that definitely our 030 slash 9 is basically one of these 030 with the top from the 022 and uh, I think that's that's where the where the story starts and ends really we're not looking at an 022 with a different front we're looking at a 030 with a different top so anything else I can tell from this 
Well, not a lot really. So far everything looks pretty much the same. Obviously we have the short strap lugs on this one, same as we'd have on the 022. Matching strap lugs at this end. This strap lug is fully chrome plated on the 030. These ones are chrome plated on the bottom section, but the upright here, which holds the top cover, that's nickel plated. Our rewind bushes on the 022 and the 030 slash 9 are both nickel plated. On the 0 slash 030, that's black anodized which presumably means that these are brass and these are aluminium. Anything else to note from the top? Not much that I can see there. Everything else appears to be the same. So there may be further differences. They're likely to be, um, we'll know that when we remove the front sections of these cameras. I'm very much expecting that these two will be the same that the earlier camera it will be completely different, well, slightly different. There were never that many changes. Right, I'll move on. I'll just remove the uh, loose components from the top. This is our film release button. It has a small return spring here. This thing is awkward to get placed. When you go to put this back in the camera, it fits in there. And that hole at the back of the top cover, back of the top plate there, it extends out to the front and getting the top cover on is all, always awkward. Basically I find it easiest to hold this down with a pair of tweezers like this from the back, feed my top cover on, try and wriggle this thing up through the uh, hole in the top cover and uh, with five minutes of wriggling you'll achieve it. So I'll take that off. A shutter release here. Let's lift that out. It may or may not have a spring, I can't remember. It has got a spring. And that spring is a bit reluctant to come out of the hole. Yeah, I've got it on that shaft. That's pretty greasy. And this is just a, the shutter release on the shaft. Okay. So what else from the top? Well, we can take the strap lug off. Obviously, it had the short strap lug, same as the uh, Type 0 22. Two screws hold this bush in place. This is a little bit sticky with dried grease. I'll take the strap lug off at this end. Of course, there's no cocking rack in this retinette. And take the chrome trim off the top. Right, that, that removes all the loose bits. There's, there's nothing to fall off there. I'll open the bottom of the camera here so that I can... And then we'll, we'll look at uh, removing the shutter. Oh, I probably could release, remove the shutter first, I suppose. Better go and find the right tool for that. I've got a, a spanner just for doing retinettes. I think it fits this model. I'm not sure. The spanner I have here doesn't um, pass through this baffle. This little metal baffle in the back here. It won't pass through there, so I can't use that one. But I've got other tools here. This one here will probably do it. This used to be a pair of circlip pliers. It's had the ends suitably ground and I should be able to get that to engage with the notches in the retaining ring and rotate that. If I can get this to catch the light better. This is black cat and a coal cellar stuff this it's always hard trying to find the get the tools engaged all right we're right that turned
if that retaining ring is exceptionally unenthusiastic about moving you may need to put a drop of solvent on there because it's possible it's been locked in place with some solvent okay so that's off let's lift the shutter out now my flash connection here is held with a little uh, plastic connector it's got a small screw in there clamping the connection just back that screw up a couple of turns and the wire should come out it does we can pop our shutter to one side. We have some shims here. There's a good selection of shims there. Three paper shims and a metal shim. Put them carefully to one side. And here we have the camera body. Now I think I'll compare this with the 022 and we'll see what that looks like. I'll just pull the shutter off that. Well on my 022 some bright spark has lost the plastic connector and its screw and they've simply soldered that flash connection up which I don't feel like removing at the moment but you can see quite clearly here the difference between the fronts of the cameras and so there's certainly a, you know quite a pronounced difference here. This is certainly the way it's done on the 030 and this is certainly quite different here. The casting here is probably held on with two screws. I don't know if we need to remove the labels or not. I don't remember. This one we may well need to remove the labels because I suspect that there's a screw under these corners. Let's just check that. Yep, so that casting lifts off easily. This one here, I suspect it doesn't. I'll just remove this little plate. No, there's no way of lifting this front plate off there. These name plates have got to come off top and bottom in order to remove this piece. I can consider at this time whether I need to remove that piece at all. Basically I'd only be removing this in order to lift out the connection for the cocking of the shutter or the release over here. Now both of those parts are freely accessible without removing that front cover and since I don't see lots of sand or other nuisances in there I think I'll leave that well alone uh, there's, there's no point venturing in there there's no point removing this because I've got to take those name plates off and they're often well stuck down they're hard to get loose they're exceptionally hard to get loose without leaving some mark on them and I do not have replacements, pretty replacements, that would go back there if I made a mess of them. So there's no point removing that plate, we'll leave that alone. I think the, uh, the clear thing to note here is that the cameras are quite different. Um, this is certainly O uh, 030 with the earlier style of top fitted to it. It's not an 022 with a different front. Let me just pop these two screws back. I'll just do this briefly. I'm going to take those pieces out in a second, but I just want to pop that to one side. And I'll put this camera back together. Since I'm not servicing this one today, this is um, one from my dead cameras to be serviced pile. I've got a goodly number that I've gathered up over the years to 
be serviced and uh, found new homes for at some time in the future. But not necessarily immediately. That's better. That thing wasn't seated. I'll get this thing mounted back in place and push it to one side. I think I've answered my questions. The leatherette off next, I suppose. Let's get the back catch release cover loose. That screw's unusually tight. It might be bent. These screws are quite light. If somebody has had the camera screwed down tight to a tripod and given the camera a good twist, it'll actually wrench this whole plate and the screws with it. Yeah, that screw is bent. This mate will be in the same state. And the scalpel. That is not sliding under the air. I think I need a new blade. This one might do better. Yep. Just get under that leatherette patch. Yeah, the tip of that other scalpel blade was just slightly chipped right at the tip. And I couldn't get down underneath the edge of the leatherette with it. But that's fine. Now you'll notice this has a metal film advance lever. The 030 was the last of them with the metal advance lever I think. Oh no, yeah, it was the, yeah, the red, no, the 1A. The 1A was the first with the plastic. This was the 030, known as, known as the RetNet 1 typically. This one, of course, is a bit of a hybrid. Either it's a bit uneven in the way it's it's glued on here. That's not unusual. It's not uncommon for the leatherette to be stuck more firmly to the aluminium body than it is to the chrome trim around the edges. I don't know whether that's because the adhesive had a, uh, a firm and mechanical grip on the aluminium in the chrome plated surface. That's certainly feasible. Or whether there's some chemical reason why the bond should be stronger. Now this boss in the centre which is used with the a camera mount to uh, put the camera on a special stand for copying purposes or something of that nature. That's only anodised aluminium 
it's easily scratched when you're getting around here with a scalpel try not to scratch up the edges of that thing if you do make a mess of that boss you can probably tidy it up with a, um, a marker pen better than you could do with black paint better if you don't make a mess of it at all The adhesive is in, in a good condition. It's not all brittle. It's uh, still a little bit elastic, and as, as a result, it's not especially easy to get this leather out off. In this case, I know there's some corrosion under here because I can see all the Zeiss bumps. Sometimes the leatherette at this end is loose because the tripod socket is loose and as a result it's lifted the leatherette with it. That's not the case here. The tripod socket seems to be reasonably firmly fixed. And so are the leatherettes. This process of getting the leatherettes off the camera is often the most time consuming part of a whole repair. When the cameras were comparatively current and parts were readily available I can remember when I worked at Kodak you needed a leatherette, you just went down to the spare parts drawers at the back of the workshop and you got one and then you just added it to the uh, to the worksheet so any time a piece of leatherette even the slightest little bit of difficulty in coming away you just simply took it off in bits ripped it off scraped everything clean and fitted a new leatherette of course we don't have that luxury this century so it's absolutely important that the leatherette comes off if not complete and undamaged at least as far as possible it comes off in one piece These light coloured patches here, that's corrosion, that's corrosion products. Be mostly on the aluminium base of the camera there. Right, well I'll remove that chrome trim next.
Right, that's off. That's good. Let's see if I can get this tripod socket off. Those screws were certainly not loose. This I think next, we need that rewind button off. Here's the tool. Nice cheap pair of pliers. Cut off short. Stuck in the vise. Run a couple of drill bits down the front of it there between the jaws. The right diameter to grab that button. Does a great job. And there's a couple of other tasks that that's also useful for with retinas, so it's uh, proved its worth. Right, so the screw out of here. That screw drives the sprocket from the sprocket shaft. And we can lift out that shaft. And the sprocket. The film advance up here, well I need a special screwdriver to get that loose get into that screw and the screwdriver I've got is here you can see it's just a normal screwdriver that I've just cut the center away with a dremel so that it engages just at the outside now take note of how this is arranged this piece unhooks it just drops into there. That little piece of metal is inclined to fall out. If that falls out then I've got to get it, open up the front to, to retrieve it. We may well be doing that whether I wanted to or not. Here's a washer. That drive dog. That gear will come off. All these screws are quite tight. That's not always the case. I'll remove that spring. That's the return spring for that small pawl. There's the screw and the pawl and the little standoff for the pawl. And this bush can come off. This is the clutch. It's looking quite stripped down. I'll take the screw here off. That's the screw on the shaft for the release lever. That releases the film advance to allow you to wind on to the next shot when you fire the shutter. And that arm, the release arm here has a small return spring on it, which is easily damaged. So I normally take that off prior to cleaning the cap, the components in the ultrasonic cleaner because that way I can make sure it doesn't get caught up in the basket or some other unfortunate thing before it. It's not wanting to come off. And today it's being awkward. We'll leave it exactly where it is. No point fighting with that and getting into trouble. At the base of the camera we'll just flip that spring off there. That's the return spring for the catch, the rewind button catch. Here's the rewind button catch. The rewind button catch's job is to hold the rewind button in the set position when you press the rewind button until you move the film advance lever again which 
releases that lever and allows the rewind mechanism to reset. There's just three screws here that hold the advanced shaft bush to the body. And I'll just retrieve those. All this is very, very sticky with dried out grease. And we can remove the take up spool and the bush from the take up spool. Now I've just got to get a bit tidier with these parts and make sure that all the springs get pushed to one side and all the pieces that are going through the ultrasonic cleaner go in the other direction. So let me just check this, see what springs I've got hiding in here that I don't want going through. That one for a start. That one. Is that the lot? I think I'm one short somewhere. Let me just quick head count. No, no, that's right. I still want the spring off this thing before I clean that. 